Now let me tell you about 126th Street in back of the Apollo. It was the most exciting street that ever existed in the history of New York. And these pictures will show why. My name is Shirley Taylor. I'm the Senior Director of Education at the Apollo Theater. This live wire from the archives will focus on the life and work of Gordon Anderson. Mr. Anderson was the house photographer for the Apollo in the 1950s and 60s, and through his lens, we get a peek into the backstage world of the Apollo, as well as the Harlem community. In addition to shooting performers both here on the stage and backstage, he took his cameras to the streets of Harlem and even documented the neighborhood's thriving queer communities. My name is Brad San Martin, and I have the honor of being the archivist at Harlem's world-famous Apollo Theater. So, without any further ado, let's examine the life of Gordon Doc Anderson. My mother would tell us, your grandfather, he's taking photos, you know, at the Apollo. <laughs> he really played a big part in black history and getting pictures of boxers and actors and singers. He paints these wonderful pictures of people like Harry Belafonte, who is, you know, trying to figure it out. He owes Gordon some money. And Gordon says, when you make it, you can pay me double. Many years later, he's already been through the movies and this, that, and the other. He sees Gordon Anderson, and he hands him a wad of large bills. The Apollo Theater archives are home to a lot of material by Mr. Anderson, but we don't always know a lot about him. He could be a little mysterious. So let's take a step back and talk about the man. He's, you know, he's from Baltimore. Uh, pretty much up until 40, until he comes up to New York, he is working professionally as a musician. Yes, and he had some songs published. His most famous one is the, the Pied Piper of Harlem, which Tommy Dorsey recorded, and it won a songwriting contest. Was he even a photographer at that point? He started taking photographs as a teenager, so before the war, he had joined an amateur camera club in Baltimore. But at that point in his career, photography was really just a hobby and a way to make some extra cash. He would set up at church or in public parks and sell portraits, but he, his real ambition was to be a musician. During the war, when he was traveling around Europe and the Pacific Front, he had struck up a pen pal relationship with Billie Holiday, and when he came back to Baltimore, he had the opportunity to meet her backstage. Um, and they became kind of friends, and she really became one of his mentors and encouraged him to pursue a career in concert documentation seriously. So when she was playing at the Apollo, she invited him to come up to New York with her uh, and photograph her concert. And he left Baltimore and never looked back, um, and he stayed in Harlem pretty much for the rest of his career. Here she is. They called her sassy then. This is Sarah Vaughan. She was appearing at the Apollo Theater that week. Just for posterity, I had to capture the immortal Duke Ellison and some of the famous men who made jazz history. And little by little, the idea of being the musician gives way to the idea of being a photographer. He's not the outsider who's here to take your picture. He is the insider who understands the wings of backstage, who understands that he's a part of performers because he is that, that's the way he starts. He conveys the confidence of what it means to walk into your private moment without your turning away 